gone live on the right 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 that's why i was not uh i was seeing myself for a live on the yeah not uh, uh, now it is connecting live now it should be coming as live you should be seeing yeah yeah so you should see me uh, talking to you yeah 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 is, is my audio coming okay yeah okay okay yeah i've got uh, a few viewers yeah okay fine okay good afternoon internet we are here in covid times under lockdown and let's see what we can understand by uh, or about exposure so uh, hi kanthi sir and uh, i am now going to be showing you a short clip about exposure which i have just made for this particular uh, program and let's see how we how it works so let me go into my vlc show, uh, source and i'll just be adding this source okay so i do not loop it so what we are doing is i am showing you a clip which will explain basically what i am trying to teach you just now so this is a very short video and let's see what we understand out of it yeah just one second it should be the one mm. should be the one is coming up now yes sir so hello everybody and let's see what we can do now okay okay this is it is oh in the meantime i can take questions which we are which we can do uh so hi uh, ranjit sir hi sanjeev hi mr sushil gaurav okay so let's see if we can if this is the right one Good day everyone. I am Dhananjay Mohre and today we are going to discuss exposure. Uh when we are using studio lights in us inside a studio we have been hearing that there is something known as the exposure triangle. The exposure triangle basically has been consisting of the shutter speed, the aperture and the ISO. However, these parameters tend to change a little bit when we use lights in the studio. I hope my explanation shutter video speed, is audible. For example, has little or no relevance in a studio. Why? We have shutter speeds ranging from 30 seconds to in many cameras up to 1/8000th of a second 
or one four thousandth of a second in most cameras. However, in the studio or when we are using studio lights, the shutter speeds which we can use effectively use are only shutter speeds below one two hundredth of a second Hello, or Mr. one two fiftieth of a second Hello, Ram. in some cases, which is known as uh. the sync speed. What is exposure? If we go beyond Mr. the sync Rushan, speed in the studio, we have will a find this that we end up getting black bands. And you'll, uh, understand. Now these black bands are basically the second curtain coming into the picture before the first curtain has finished, or the exposure is completely finished. That is why we have to use shutter speeds below one two hundredth of a second or one two fiftieth of a second, depending upon your camera. and the shutter speed below that is going to be your synchro speed making shutter speeds fairly irrelevant the other control which we have in the studio is the aperture the aperture is a very important control because even when we take a meter reading with a flash meter the value which we get is the aperture the aperture changes the exposure by either doubling it or halving it so it works in the same way as it would work outdoors similarly if we are using a flash meter and we get a reading of say f8 if you take that f8 reading and you set your camera to f8 you generally are very close or absolutely correct expo on the exposure front this is why exposure is basically dependent upon the aperture the third parameter which we have is the iso now iso is equally important very pe many people don't think it is important and generally in the studio we keep it at 100 iso however if you increase the iso beyond 100 and you use something like say a 200 or a 400 or a 800 Nishan bhai ye recording hai you will find that the picture becomes brighter and brighter and brighter ye aapko 5 so minute if recording dekhna are, padega uh, in the studio and you find that your picture is getting under or is going a little darker we can increase the iso and still make the picture brighter so iso also will help you in the studio the fourth parameter which we can use in the studio is physically moving the light backward or forward so by changing or altering the distance between the subject and the light we can control the light itself the closer you bring the light to the subject the brighter it becomes and the further away you take it the darker it will become Good there evening, is also Raja. a fifth parameter which many lights offer mm. that is the light itself has light controls so you can increase or decrease the light the amount of light from the controls itself so these are some of the five parameters which i would say with which you can control studio lights thank you Okay, I think I have. Yeah, I guess I'm back live. my obs is yeah so i guess you must have understood a little bit about the five parameters of exposure as i have been saying in my 
uh, in the video which you just saw uh, I know that the video is over and now I'm continuing so depending upon what questions you will ask me I will respond accordingly so uh, which light I've got a question from Mr. Gajakant which I'm not too sure about which light you most used for everywhere uh, uh, Mr. Gajakant uh, if I understand you right uh, which is the light which I'm using at different places well I use different light, lights everywhere uh, sometimes it is a V1 sometimes it could be a AD200 sometimes it could be AD600 depends upon the situation so uh, uh, it's not that you can have one light and it will do everything for you because the V1 for example is a, is a light which we mount on the camera and AD200 AD600 these are off camera lights so they will work in a different way hello Debashish Babu and uh, Mr. Naveen so uh, you can just uh, chat with me you can just uh, type in your uh, uh, queries and I will answer them for you uh, even right now I am using a Godox light and it would be strange to know but it's an LED light which I am using to light myself up for the video uh, Niloyanath uh, uh, which uh, for wedding photography which light is necessary uh, Godox has now come up with a new light which is pretty useful for wedding because it is got it's an LED light and it has a flash built into it so the, it's a combination of the two lights and uh, because of that what happens is if you are shooting video and you are shooting uh, stills you can use these lights you can put a softbox on it so you getting you get very good soft light very good for HD uh, SLR video and uh, again because they uh, you can trigger them with the flash so your partner or your friends or whoever is your associate can click uh, stills whenever he thinks it's necessary uh, how can I set my uh, Godox light to camera what kind of settings for the, uh, the first, uh, like clouds and opposite to sunlight okay uh, I presume you are uh, talking about how uh, should you overcome uh, day, uh, daylight so if you want dark uh, this thing I will be doing a specific uh, video on this how you can uh, overcome daylight this is what we call HSS or high sync speed so your, uh, your shutter speed will have to go uh, higher than normal that means your normal synchro speed is 250th of a second so you will have to use something higher than that maybe about a thousandth of a second where the clouds and everything come correctly and uh, you will have to use a flash which is of high power something like a AD600 or so so you will uh, probably get a, a good result uh, so for wedding photography which flash is best V1, AD200 or 860 uh, see the 860 uh, and V1 and AD200 are all of the same power so uh, the V1 is a rounded flash looks more sophisticated it's much easier to use and has some additional features uh, the AD200 is an off camera flash you cannot mount it on the camera 860 again you can mount on the camera uh, so it depends I personally use flashes off camera so for me probably the AD200 would be a better choice uh, which LED uh, light you said uh, now sir uh, you can go on to the website it will be coming up now right now I don't, I'm not too sure whether it is available because of the lockdown so uh, these will be uh, coming shortly for wedding photography I would normally recommend a two light setup as the minimum setup uh, very nice question whether uh, Godox will go cheaper after the longest lockdown uh, did petrol go cheaper despite of international rates going down so I think I would answer the question of that uh, uh, okay the name of the LED light I'll just give it to you uh, I'll have to just go online and check it myself So 
I think one of the Godox guys can probably uh, guide you with it, but I will uh, just give you the uh, name in a minute. I'll also have to go on to the Godox India website whether it is available. So I'll give you the name in a minute. Uh, okay, somebody is asking me how to use it. Uh, v1 and how do you work in the multi mode uh, multi mode i mean uh, i guess you mean uh, multiple flashes if you want them to fire so multiple flashes uh, that is a stroboscopic effect which you get uh, there are two parameters in it one is the number of flashes and the second is the duration so you have to control the two so uh, it's a setting and i think the cover one of our uh, friends has done a uh, video on that uh, lights are series yeah no the sl is the other one wait one second i have to tell this is a new hybrid series of light which has come uh fv Okay, the light is the FV150 and the FV200. These are the new lights which have come in. FV stands for flash and video. So it's a combined uh, light which you can use. It's a very, very good light to use. The light output of the 150 would, uh, in flash would be close to that of the AD200. It's not a very powerful flash, but because the video light is very strong, and you can use it for both it's a pretty effective light especially if you're using a modern generation camera such as an 850 or something like that you are uh, you can easily go to higher isos and get very good results with it so that's one of the things which i could say uh, yes tell me how else can i help you Yeah, uh, Ranjit Kumar here has already mentioned it, FV200 and FV150. Uh, so you will get that. These lights are uh, available and the, be the beauty of these lights is because they have got the uh, Godox mount, you can mount uh, soft boxes and all kinds of accessories on top of it. So you are using it for continuous light as well as for the uh, video purposes uh, as a video light as well as for flash so that's the advantage of the FP series uh, but I think AD200 I use on camera and off camera I use EC200 which is EC200 Neela Jahangir, I cannot understand your question, sir. I think AD200 I use on camera and off camera with the help of EC200. Achha, you are using an off camera cord. Okay. Uh, I think it is the other way around. Using the cord, you can connect it to the camera. You will not be able to uh, directly mount because the uh, AD200 does not have a hot shoe. So, uh, you will not be able to do it. Ah, I want a Telugu translation. <laughs> uh, I'll probably be able to do a Hindi translation or a Marathi translation. Unfortunately, no Telugu right now. Uh, is there any video of you to set up Godox flashes? Uh, there will be some videos which are coming up. But these are, uh, I am going into more uh, complicated settings of the Godox such as the custom settings and things like that, I will be showing you those. Uh, there are many soft boxes in which is the best for AD200. I would, uh, there's a very nice soft box made by uh, Godox itself, 
which is an umbrella type of a soft box i would recommend that because it's very easy to assemble and disassemble uh so uh, uh i prefer th that and it works with uh, all of them because you can directly use the s mount uh, mount the flash and use it i find it uh, and it's pretty cost effective uh, uh light and uh, very easy to set up uh, uh shubham kundu for couple portrait which size should be better uh remember one thing the size is the is dependent upon the upon two factors how far are you taking the light away from the subject and how much of the subject you are covering so if you are shooting a full length average height of a person is about 5 feet 10 inches so if it is a 5 feet 10 inch person your light if you want a light even light from top to bottom will at least have to be 1 1 and a half meters of box so 140 would be uh, probably the soft box which i would use uh, for a full length and i would have to place it just out of my frame i try to keep my soft boxes as close to the subject as possible to get the softest possible light so uh, this is what uh, i would recommend uh the 60 by 60 soft boxes or 80 by 80 soft boxes which are there are good as entry level soft boxes they generally come in the kit form but i would prefer a little rectangular soft boxes because what happens with a rectangular soft boxes because you can keep it vertical uh it does not come into your frame a square soft soft box has a tendency of coming into the frame so uh i prefer rectangular uh yeah the sbgue uh, at is a very good soft box you can go for uh, that there is a 120 also i think available in the same series so you can check out the uh this model these are some of the oh, ones which you can try uh strip soft boxes i don't uh, recall a strip soft box being made by godox or at least it's not available here right now but uh, rectangular soft boxes are there mr jaydeep yeah uh, yes you can use the ad200 uh, 200 pro with the umbrella octa yes in fact uh, i use it with that very often because the ad200 uh, pro Uh, with the bare tube gives a fairly even light and it spreads very nicely inside the soft, uh, umbrella soft boxes ah uh, with the v1 yes because you are going to be restricted but with the s mount you can practically put it in any soft box so mr umesh you can try any uh, this thing even uh, the same thing uh, it works i i would generally prefer a soft box where it's a reverse mounted soft box uh, such as the umbrella version of the octa uh molik you can try it it is a beautiful light the ad200 with bulb uh in and the octa box so it's a very nice combination i'm talking about the octa box with uh, the one which uh, godox is making how do i get ambient light in photo while shooting on octa as it is generally uh, it generally darkens the background ah uh see the ambient light is independent of the subject so you have to change your shutter speed and allow ambient light in uh led or flash filament which is the best definitely uh it depends what you are uh, looking at led is a cold light source continuous if you are shooting video nothing like led if you are shooting stills flash is what i would recommend filament not uh, tungsten type of lights are pretty del delicate to handle so i would not recommend that uh so please suggest the best godox flash kit for pre and post wedding shoots uh see uh, uh, if i if you ask me honestly speaking i would go for maybe 2 ad 200s and 1 ad 
the ad200 you also have a bracket with which you can put two 200 uh, ad200s together the cost is not much uh, in uh, cost, cost difference between ad400 and ad200 but two ad200 if you need you can separate them and if you want you can put them together so that's uh, a good uh, combination sir is v1 recommended to be used as a fill light you can definitely use it it's a 80 guide number light the same as ad200 the same as 5 uh, as uh, v860 so you can easily use the light anywhere these are all very versatile lights if you are using them off camera uh v1 and 685 is a vast difference the 685 is uh firstly it does not have uh you have to put rechargeable battery separately it doesn't have a, a lithium ion battery the v1 is a rounded i'll be talking about roundheads and the shape of the light in a uh, future video uh so it is a totally different ball game uh Yeah, Ranjit here is answering the question of uh, someone uh, of my, Mr. Mahendran. Yeah. Uh, yeah, if you are looking at f, uh, a light, uh, f stop of about f8 to 11 from a distance of about 15 to 20 feet, uh, I would uh, uh, go for something like an SK400, which is a powered light. Reason being, it's a cheaper light. In a wedding scenario, you cannot guarantee that the light will not fall. Somebody will not come and bang into it. So uh, putting a 8600 at risk because it's a pretty heavy light at the top and you put uh, if you put some modifier on it, it becomes very heavy, top heavy and will it can easily topple over and damage the light. I would go for a, uh, something like an SK400 for that. Uh, how do you say, set flash zoom in AD200? You can't. AD200, there is no, uh, the, uh, there is a zoom head, but uh, it's not a, uh, uh, yeah, you, you cannot uh, set the zoom in. You can do it manually probably, but uh, nothing, it's not uh, remotely controlled. So, Can I use the V1 uh, directly in the subject or bouncing? I always prefer to bounce the light or to use it indirectly. Uh, the V1 is one of those lights which you can actually use uh, directly because it's got a roundish head and the fall off of the light is pretty good. But I would still bounce it. Uh, sir, I have AD200 which softbox. Uh, for, as I've, I think I have answered this earlier. You can go for the uh, octa boxes, which are very good. Yeah, Ranjit has already replied. You can't zoom. Uh, can we use AD200 as strobe light in regular marriages? Yes, you can use the AD200 as a regular uh, strobe in a marriage. Uh, you can use the bare tube head with. Oh, sorry, I think I've gotten off. Sorry, goodbye. I think I've uh, my camera is packed up. <laughs> Chala.